بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده الله سبحانه وتعالى سأز بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتذر وما بدلوا تبديلا I want everyone to pay close attention to this because I'm going to ask you guys questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says From the believers there are men who kept the promise that they made to Allah There are other people who are waiting for their opportunity And there are those who have already fulfilled that promise And they never ever broke the promise they made with Allah Okay the very beginning we said From the believing people there are men Which means what? That a person can be a believer and be a male But that doesn't necessarily mean they are a A man Allah SWT specifically uses the word rijal, men Okay, in Arabic you have words that will share root letters Common letters And words that share root letters have common letters oftentimes have commonalities in their meanings as well. So we're talking about root words, root letters. So the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses is Rijalun. Rijal means men. There are three root letters here. Ra, Jim, and Lam. These three same root letters are used in another very, very common word, Rijal. What does Rijal mean? Yes. Leg. leg. Exactly. What is a leg supposed to do? First and foremost, yeah, go ahead. Support. Okay, what else? You. Come on, someone else raised their hand. What else? It supports. What else does it do? It kicks. What else? Abs absolutely. What else? Yeah, walking. So look, a leg is supposed to be something that you stand on. A man is supposed to be someone that you can rely on support. He can support other people. Right? Talk about walking. What do they say? Put your what forward? Your best foot forward. Your leg is supposed to help you lead. Leg also does what? You said kick. It also has the ability to... Be aggressive to also be defensive. All of these are qualities that a man needs to exhibit. Each and every one of us. But the wisdom is in choosing which quality to exhibit and when. Okay, which quality do you show at what time? Now, some of these concepts, you know, they're just concepts. They're just ideas. Talk about support and defense and aggression, all that stuff. The best way to learn is to look at an example of an individual. And the best example is whom? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا In the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for all of you, all of you, the best example. So I want to look at just one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was narrated to us by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Anas ibn Malik, when he narrated this hadith, he was what your age is right now. What your age is. So he stayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam between the ages of 9 to like 19, which is pretty much all of you are in this age range. And he saw the Prophet ﷺ at that time, and he saw what it means to be a man. How does he describe the Prophet ﷺ? Do you know what he says? He says the Messenger of Allah was He was the best of all people. Now this is a very general statement, right? To say he's the best is just like, what's so specific about it? Just, oh, he's just the best. Then he tells us specifically some of the qualities that make him the best. Some salient features of the Prophet ﷺ. He says that, the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of all people. Most generous of all people. You guys heard this phrase, uh, get rich or die trying. You guys heard this phrase before? Right? What do you think? This is something to live by or something? It's not live by. We should live by this or no? no? I see some people like nodding their heads, man. No, this is not something you live by. You know why? This job that people are out there breaking their backs for, breaking their necks for, the day that that guy dies, that same company is going to have an ad for that position. They're going to forget about you the day you die, my friend. You don't go and forsake your life for these things, right? A job is just there to help you support those who are in need. That's it. The Prophet وسلم, he was there as the greatest support for the people around him. Men are those who support the women folk around them. The Prophet وسلم, supported the orphans and the widows. He took care of the people who are less fortunate in his community. From that, that's how we learn generosity. Let me tell you a story of the Prophet وسلم's generosity. Once a man comes in, to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ, he was gifted, someone had gifted him like a very nice cloak. It had come from all the way from Yemen. And that's a pretty big deal back in those days. And the Prophet ﷺ looked better than anyone else looked we wearing any other clothes. Like I know you guys try to like, uh, at least you should at least, dress nice when you go anywhere. This is another quality of a human, of a man, not just the, of a human, of a man. As someone who, you, you know where they say, look the part, you dress for the job that you want? Right? Don't walk around in pajamas, man. You gotta look like someone who stands out. That's what the Prophet did to Allah ﷺ. He always looked fresh. And he وسلم, had a cloak someone had gifted him. And he looked amazing in it. And everyone complimented him. And he loved that cloak. 
Once a person comes in, he sees the Prophet ﷺ wearing it. He has seen it before. The Nabi ﷺ doesn't have it on one day. He goes and he asks a question in front of everyone. Like, you guys are here? So he comes in. The Prophet is sitting here. And he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, can you give me that cloak? He straight up asked him to his face. Like this super expensive thing that he got from another country. Can you give that to me? The Prophet ﷺ gets up, goes straight to his house, Grabs that cloak, comes back, hands it over to him with a smile on his face. Doesn't say one word. And the guys who are sitting there, they're all staring at that dude like daggers in their eyes. What is wrong with you, man? First of all, the Prophet looks amazing. And that second of all, like, do you think that it's just easy to give away something you really like? And the Prophet all of a sudden is not going to say no. They know that he's the most generous person. So they get really upset with him. And they're just staring at it, but they can't say anything because the Prophet is there. So you can't yell at somebody in the company of the Prophet. So they wait for the gathering to finish. And when class is done, and the Prophet all of a sudden leaves, then they all gang up on him. Yo, what is wrong with you, dude? You know the Prophet's not going to say no to you. Why would you ask him? And he said, listen, listen, listen. He said, I'm not doing this because I'm selfish or anything like that. I'm not doing it for my own benefit. The only reason is because the day I die, I want to be buried wearing the clothes of the Prophet Wasallam. That's a legacy right there. That's a legacy right there. How many people here named Muhammad? Raise your hands. How many people? One, two, three, four. How many people named Ahmed around here? Anyone? There you go. Another four right there. How many named Murtaza? Murtaza is right there. Murtaza. Mushtaba. Murtaza. Yeah, we got one. Murtaba. Anyone? Mushtaba. Right? Hadi. All these are the names of the Prophet The most common name in the world. That's something that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy. All these people look around, the wealthiest people in the world, the richest people in the world, the top of the Forbes list. Are those people you look up to? Are those people you respect? Are those people that you admire, you adore? Oh, I want to be just like him when I grow up. These are people that you make memes out of, man. You make jokes out of these people. How many of those people are divorced? How many of those people, their kids run away from them? They don't even want anything to do with them. Money cannot buy you love, cannot buy you respect, cannot buy you admiration and adoration, cannot buy you honor and loyalty. Do you know what can, though? The exact opposite of gaining money is giving it away. When you spend on people, you take care of people, you see how people will respect you, love you, admire you, adore you. People will surround you because of your generosity. The Prophet ﷺ was surrounded by people who knew that he would be there to help them no matter what. That's what makes a man. Someone that everyone can rely on. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was the most generous of people. Then he continues, وَكَانَ أَشْجَعَ nas. He was the bravest of people. And this is what everyone thinks manliness is, right? Bravery, courage. Let me tell you right now. Manliness is not sitting around in a room making a four-hour podcast, talking to a bunch of men with your shirt off, smoking a cigar, wearing shades inside. I know you know who I'm talking about, right? And there's plenty of those people like that today. That's, that's what makes you a man. Imagine I'm sitting here with my shirt off, right? You're going to look at me like, what's wrong with this guy, right? And yet these are people that, you know, people look up to supposedly. Yeah, this is what makes a man, right? Sitting around talking about all kinds of nonsense. Who has time to sit around and talk for four hours? For God's sake, you don't have a job, man? Like, you know, unemployed energy right there, my friend. Go and do something with your life. And yet, the Prophet ﷺ, this is how he ﷺ was the bravest of people. Let me show you how he was the bravest. The hadith continues. He says, وَلَقَدْ فَزِيَ أَهْلُ الْمَدِينَةِ لَيْلَةً A night came when the people of Medina, they heard a sound. Like, you know, today we have like sonic booms and stuff like that. Something like that. All of a sudden, they hear this explosive sound. At that time, they didn't have the kind of technology you and I do today. So it makes sense why. Today, you might hear like this loud sound. It might be like, oh, it's whatever, fireworks, something like that. Or there is like a jet that flew overhead or something like that. They didn't have anything like that back in the day. So this huge sound, people wake up terrified. Oh, what is that? And then people immediately get up out of their beds, start putting their clothes on, putting their shoes on, getting ready. And they run out of their homes, and they all gather in the streets. Yo, you guys hear that? Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, I think it came from this way. So they all gather together, and they run in the direction of that sound. As they're running in that direction, the Prophet ﷺ, I want you to imagine this in your mind's eye, this, this sight. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is coming back from the direction of the sound. They're going towards it. He's already on his way back. And he is sitting on a horse. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His horse, the horse belonged to Abu Talha radiallahu anhu. He's sitting on the back of that horse. There's no saddle on that horse. He has a sword in his hand hanging around his neck. You know, you have the loop. He has a loop around his neck holding the sword in his hand. Imagine, like on top of a horse like this, holding a sword. Middle of the night. And he's telling the people... That, لا تراء, don't be afraid, nothing to be afraid of. يردهم, telling them, go home, go home, it's nothing to be afraid of. He had already gone and investigated what happened. And then he says about the horse, إنا وجدناه بحرا, أو إنه بحر. This is an ocean. Okay, let me explain this hadith to you. What does this mean? First and foremost, everyone in Medina, they heard that sound. By the time they put their clothes on, they get out of their house and they're walking on the streets, the Prophet is already coming back. Which means that these people were asleep. What was he doing, sallallahu alayhi wa He was wide awake. Everyone else is asleep. He is awake, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doing what? Praying to Hajjud. 
Because the inner strength of a man, that is what exudes ex externally. You will see the strength of a person on the outside when they're inside. Their core is strong. We're not talking about your abs. We're talking about your heart. Right? Though you definitely should be do ab day as well. You know, ab day, leg day, you should definitely do that, right? So the Prophet ﷺ was internally strong. That strength came from his connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Because a person who has God on their side, it doesn't matter who's against them. It does not matter who's against them. In the middle of the night, he is up and praying. Everyone else is sleeping, snoring in their bed. He heard that sound. Everyone else heard that sound. They wake up. By the time they wake up, the Prophet ﷺ already has a sword. He's already picked up his sword from his, from his room. He's got the sword, opens the door, walks out. The first horse that he sees, he grabs that horse. Now, this is what makes a man that you're not looking around. Oh, who can, who can go and help? He doesn't say, where's Abu Bakr, where's Umar, where's Uthman, where's Ali, where's all these guys at? Can someone go and take care of this, please? He's not calling someone desperately, can you take care of this? He doesn't need to delegate the work. He's like, no, no, I'm the leader. I'm going to show you how to lead. He وسلم, grabs the sword, throws open the door. The first horse that he sees, he grabs it. Do you know how you know this is the first horse? This horse belonged to Abu Talha radiallahu anhu. This horse had a, re a very bad reputation, unfortunately, in Medina. As one of the slowest horses in the whole city. It's a lazy old horse. People are like, yo, this is not going to go anywhere. And the Prophet is not looking around. Let me find the strongest, fastest, quickest horse. He says, no, time is of the essence. You got to make moves. He sees the first horse, grabs it, and he jumps on top of it. Now, two things. Number one, that there was no saddle on this horse. Okay? We just went horseback riding a little while ago. Man, they spent like 15, 20 minutes explaining to us how to saddle the horse. Then they gave us little steps. to, Like, you know, you have steps over here. They told us, here's the steps. You got to stand on it. And then you have to slowly, gently put your leg here. And then your, your leg over it. And we have to wear a helmet and everything like that. We are like grown men. And they're making us do this, right? Looking like little children wearing helmets, riding this horse very gently. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you know how old he was at this time? He migrated from Mecca to Medina when he was 53. He passed away when he was 63. So that means that he was وسلم, in his late 50s, early 60s, and he just goes to that horse, jumps right on top of it. No saddle, nothing, with a sword in his hand. We talk about, oh, that's an old man. Is that something an old man can do today? We look around at, you know, uncles today in, in our time and age, right? 50 years old, bro, they got a stomach that comes all the way out here, right? The stomach will win the race before they do, you know? And yet the Prophet, وسلم, that's not how the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Absolutely. You know, his chest and his stomach was completely flat, as in like it was even, level, right? And he saw something himself. Those swords are not light. A sword like that weighs 20, 30, 40 pounds. Think of, think of that for a second. Jumping on a weight, jumping on a horse, carrying that kind of weight with one hand. At that age, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, gets on top of the horse and he sets off in the direction of the sound. He gets there, investigates, finds out everything, and he's on his way back. By the time people even put on their shoes, he's already on his way back. That's what it means to lead by example. That is bravery. That is courage. He's not saying, oh, where's my entourage? Where's my crew? Where's all my bodyguards? Nothing like that. He saw something is the first on the scene. What do I need to do to, do to protect my people? Look out for them. The people of Medina. And then he makes a statement. By the way, you know where we came across this hadith? We read this hadith in our last year of studies when we cover all the books of hadith. Well, we actually read this even earlier than that. In our fourth year when we study Baraha. Baraha is Arabic eloquence. Eloquence is basically... Like, you know, deep statements, and you're like, man, that was a really powerful statement. Run that back one more time, you know? And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. It seems very simple and straightforward. We found him, the horse, to be an ocean. Two things. Number one, what does that mean? Found him to be an ocean. You know, if you go to, like, let's say you go to, you know, the coast. You're standing on the coast, and then you just look as far as the eye can see. As far as the eye can see. And you're basically watching, like, the end of the horizon, the end of the earth at that point. And your foot is right here on the shore. Now imagine you take that other foot of yours and you're able to extend it all the way to the edge of the ocean. So he says وسلم, that the strides this horse takes is as if it's crossing the ocean in one step. Hold on, what do we say at the beginning about this horse? It was slow. It was old and it was slow. But the Prophet said, no, we found it to be extremely quick and fast. Extremely quick and fast. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, first of all, this is a miracle of the Prophet ﷺ. Second of all, if a person uses the resources, the abilities, the skills Allah has given you, and people, all of you have different skills and talents. Some things you're good at that he is not good at, that he is good at, that he's not good at. There are things like that. Things I'm good at and things that you're good at. And it's not all going to be the same. But if you use what Allah has given you for the right reasons, with the right intentions, Allah will bless you in that thing. Whatever it might be. And so the Prophet ﷺ used this horse, this old slow horse, for the right reasons, with the right intention, and you see how Allah made it into the quickest, strongest, fastest horse. Number one. Number two, he said that we found it to be an ocean. 
This is a, it's a, it's something called, a, in, uh, it's a rhetorical device called isti'ara. I'm not going to get into the whole grammar behind it, but basically the Prophet ﷺ would sometimes use words, phrases, rhetorical devices that were so powerful that even his own people didn't understand. Like if I use like a, you know, a couple of words right now and you're like, man, what does that mean? Someone bust out the dictionary to figure that out, right? The Prophet ﷺ sometimes would use words, he would be having a gathering, just like you and I, and he would say something, he would have a long speech, and then he would use one or two words, and the people around him, they have to raise their hands. O oh, Messenger of Allah, we understood everything you said except that one word. His people were known for their strength of the Arabic language, they were known for being extremely intelligent. But the Prophet ﷺ was even more intelligent than all of them combined. All of them combined. But his intelligence, his generosity, his strength, all of these things, وسلم, was never intimidating. It was never intimidating. That he was strong, he was physically capable, he was extremely intelligent, he was all of these things, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it was never intimidating, like, oh no, I can't go near him. It was always inviting. Always inviting. So you should be all of the qualities of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but never to the extent that people don't want to be around you. Rather, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was magnetic. He was magnetic. Because they're like, this is somebody who can lead us, who can guide us, who can always be there for us. In every case, the Prophet ﷺ was there. If somebody needed food, that's the man to go to. People needed money, that's the man to go to. You need clothes, that's the man to go to. You need a commander for your army, that's the man to go to. You need a, a lady who's having issues with her husband, that's the man to go to. A man's having trouble with his children, that's the man to go to. The Prophet ﷺ was there for everyone in every single case. That is what makes a man. That people can rely on, people can... Expect that that person will support them no matter what they are going through. And so that is why we have started this initiative. This is the first, inshallah, of many. And then we're going to try and learn skills. Each and every one of us will try to learn skills that will make you the best version of yourself. Understand, you're not competing with each other. That's not it at all. You're not competing with one another. Who are you competing with? Yourself. The man in the mirror. That's it. How can I be the best version of myself? You know, there's a saying, and you guys are all, almost all of you are under the age of 20, that a man who looks at the world the same way at 40 as he did at 20 has wasted 20 years of his life. If you look at life the same way at 40 as you are doing right now in 19 and 20, then you have wasted 20 years of your life. Every single day, we want to improve. Every single day, we want to get better. So inshallah, with this initiative, we will continue to learn those kind of skills and those kind of abilities that will enhance us to become better people, to become better Muslims, so that we can embody the ethos of the Prophet wasallam, so that we can be like the greatest human being that ever lived, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is everyone ready for this, inshallah? Yeah, you guys are ready? Okay. Jazakumullah khairan. Inshallah, we'll continue with the program. Um, Dr. Asad, inshallah, will tell us what's next. Or... So we're going to start with, um, we're going to start with parallel programs, right? So there's going to be two workshops going on, and we're going to divide you guys according to your, uh, you guys have wristbands on, right? So we're going to divide according to that, and they're going to tell you in just a moment how we are going to divide them, inshallah.